<laughs> hi everyone hi hi guys we are live yeah hi. all together we are here with uh, federico paolovic as you can see <laughs> yeah, yeah that's me that's me <laughs> that's him <laughs> uh no wait a second the other okay very good <laughs> uh, oh, Welcome. We are, actually thanks, we guys. Are... thanks for the invitation uh thanks for having me here uh it's already late for an elderly man like myself but I'll, <laughs> i'll just do my best to be you know active and responsive i think you're the younger here you're the youngest mm -hmm. of us for no uh, no i'm no. the youngest You are What? the youngest, and you are yeah, the he's... only one without hair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he he's the in the middle. Am I right? Oh, I thought you were older than than me, but no, because <laughs> 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 that's just perfect. Yes, <laughs> the fact that I have no hair doesn't mean that uh, I'm older. Sadly. <laughs> 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 As a matter of fact, I started to lose my hair uh, when I was very young. So, all right, guys. So, what's going on? What what, what, what are we doing tonight? The plan? the plan is to have a very good chat with you. Oh, I can see that. And, and uh, I, want, I want to introduce you because, uh, as somebody knows, you are my drums teacher. So yes, I am. I'm very oh. happy to have you here. You are my drum teacher since uh, 2016. I'm so, so sorry. I'm... Is it that long? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. So <laughs> actually, uh, the, our, our last release, our latest release, um, 100, is the first album that I recorded uh, Using the, the skills that I learned from you, actually. <laughs> I, I have to say <laughs> two, 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 things, two, two things about this. The first one is that I'm very sorry that Simon is your student. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> And the second one is that now I understand why this is the first time that I had to edit very few hits of drums <laughs> well so. i'm very happy to hear that honestly uh we we've been working on some on some i mean both technical stuff but also like i'm a very conceptual guy i really like to dig into uh concepts instead of just exercises because i think like students they, they can just take it and work on concept for much longer time than than they would if it was just an exercise for example so i really like to share content um uh concepts instead of exercises you know so that's what i've done with with simon who is a very uh smart ass <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah actually you know he's a very he's a very curious person And and he's knowledgeable and and he has a deep understanding of of you know what the fuck I'm talking about. So you know it's actually good fun having lessons with him. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's good in pretending to understand things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he's very good. <laughs> They know me for since far um, uh, more than you. So, uh, well, yeah, no. I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but but to be serious, actually, I think knowing him, this is the best way to teach him anything because uh, I, I think it's the best way to teach anything to everyone. Because if you just uh, explain the concept to the student, uh, he will just be able to correct himself if he is not doing what he is supposed to do. If you just go for the technique and that stuff, which is very important, of course, but if you don't explain why they are doing what they are yeah, doing exactly. and what they are trying to achieve, they will never just be able to exercise. It's just that I, I, I really like to show the students the, the map of where we're going, where we actually, where we start from towards where we're going. That's, that's, the whole point of being conceptual instead of just you know giving pages and pages with no directions 
I mean, that's the only way, at least that's my way of teaching. I'm not saying it's the best one or it's the only one. It's just the way I like to do it. And I honestly can see results whenever the the student is, um, you know, curious enough and he works hard enough to actually take advantage of the concept that we're going uh, through the lessons. That's basically what I do. Not every, it's not for everyone, you know. Most people just want to. Most people just want to have the 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 homework, and mm -hmm. once they're they're done, they feel you know okay with their uh, inner concept conscience, you know. So they're like, okay, I'm done with my homework, so I can just do whatever. But that's not to me. That's not the way you should do if you want to, you know, take the the musical path seriously that's at least that's my point of view no uh, i agree completely uh mm -hmm. it's the difference between someone who wants to do it and someone to, that has to do it it's completely different uh <laughs> well, agree, yeah. it, it actually I, worked for me and actually as <laughs> i'll exploit the fact that i'm here to do some advertising because if you're a lucky person like Simon is who actually lives pretty nearby my house. You can of course come and take lessons in person with me. But if you live on the other side of the planet or in another country or another city or whatever, you can just go on my website, federicopaulovic.com and you can find uh, a lot of like online lessons that I've filmed in very high quality. And I'm going through all the most important concepts that I believe you must know in order to play drums in a certain way. I and have a commercial. Thank you. <laughs> I have a tip for the guy who is not me uh, doing all the subtitles. Now it would be a good moment to just write down his website. That's right. That's that's a good. <laughs> that's that's just you. a suggestion. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but uh, he knows how to, he knows how to write this, but not. The website. Can, can, you, can you repeat the website so you can understand? I'll type it up for you guys it. in a second. Um, da, 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 da. It's done. You. I, I give him like five seconds and then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, uh, this is what I do. This is, uh, there you go. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And, uh, and, and I'll be honest, I love to teach. It's, it's, uh, it's a sort of mission. It's not, it's not a job. It's not something that I do because I have to. I do it because I love doing it. And I don't. No, I don't want to add anything to this. I don't want to be... No, I think that uh, teaching and playing the instrument are two very different things. Uh, there are a lot of very good musicians that uh, are just not capable of uh, teaching the instrument and vice versa. Uh, yeah. But I think that you uh, are very good in both uh, <laughs> things. So uh, that's that's great and that's very hard to find so guys uh, go on his website because he is a very good teacher and also an amazing drummer as well thank you thank you i do I my best i had to say that simon uh, uh, the last time we recorded uh, said uh, less curses than usual <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember that i don't remember at all <laughs> hi hi yes say hi 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 yes uh hi, hi billy I mean, oh, hi. Uh, I normally say a bunch of bad words too when I'm in the recording studio, uh, mostly because I write myself parts which are uh, usually way too difficult to be played like on the spot in the studio. And I'm also too lazy to practice them at home for a decent amount of time. So I'm basically confident in my capability of just, you know, going to the studio and nail the part which not always happens so we have to spend a bit of time until i get it right but it's good fun either way i love doing records this is and very also, similar I'm also swearing a lot about that 
<laughs> this is very similar to what happens to Simon, but the of truth course. is that <laughs> I, I am the one writing the hard uh, drum parts, and he doesn't. Uh, some of them are even impossible to play. Like you'd have to have three three hands or something like that. Uh, but <laughs> he, he doesn't want to change them, and <laughs> he just sticks with the part. And it's well, that's because you're very good in writing them, I guess. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I, I don't know if that's the the the, the truth, but uh, <laughs> I, I think that he's just stubborn, to be honest. <laughs> well, maybe he's lazy, you know. I don't know. I mean, for, for a person who wakes up at five a.m., I wouldn't expect him to be lazy, to be honest. Yeah, I know. And the, the fact is, is that when I listen to the drum parts written by Fazio. Uh, I'm always um, astonished by how the parts mix very well with the rest of the instrument. So every course, time... He I, has written I, the music first and then he writes drums to fit with the music. That's what we are supposed to be doing as drummers, but we not always do that. Can, can I, I be to... honest about this? Mm. I, I usually start from the drum parts. That's very interesting, though. I love that. And Simon knows it. I usually start with the drum parts and then uh, everything else on top because <laughs> it changes everything, in my opinion. It does. It, yeah, yeah. It does. You can, you, it, you can do it always like that. It depends. Like It changes the, the source of the inspiration. You know, If you got a, a, a good groove idea, which is you know uh, unique and original, then you can actually write some guitar parts that actually match with the meat with the with the groove creating something new instead you can just the same way come up with a with a riff on the guitar and then the 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 task of the drummer is just creating the the uh you know the rhythmical uh texture that, that better fits with the guitar riffing and trying to be uh on one side the most supportive possible uh, for the music and on the other hand you just want to be also you know unique and personal and show your own voice that's it i think that's the most difficult uh goal to achieve when writing parts for a band that's definitely something that i go for and it's not always easy to achieve to be honest no. yes but it's maybe the most fun part <laughs> i think yeah so yeah i have a lot of fun writing drums Plus, uh, i don't i don't really like to uh let's say I, I i don't really like to learn stuff by memory and and writing drum parts as much as i love improvising all the time so basically it's very rare for me to listen to a guitar riff and then think of a groove and write down the groove let's say on guitar pro or whatever software you want to use for that instead I'd, I'd rather think of what would i play uh spontaneously on on the music uh that's not always the the the, the best solution i mean sometimes it's it's also good to uh get out your comfort zone and and try to write drum parts that you cannot play on the spot and you need to rehearse it really depends mm -hmm. there's no rules you know we we get so many questions about how we write music but there's no um there's not just one way you know it really depends uh from where the inspiration comes from so uh, there's, there's no recipe for what concerns myself, you know, it really depends. That's, that's well, very interesting. Well, Simon. actually, we, we, we wrote four albums with uh, four different approaches. Uh, the second one is, the, the first one uh, um, was uh, with uh, a lot of improvisation in composing. But mm -hmm. also uh, part of this improv or improvisation came from the um, uh, main composer of the band, which is uh, our guitar player, former band member, Paul, which is a drummer. Okay. 
I Actually, he's a, he's a drummer. Uh, second time we we composed mostly improvising in our rehearsal room, and uh, the third time we composed more thinking about uh, the atmosphere, the mood that we wanted to um, give to the album because it was a concept album, and uh, this time. Uh, we were more writing down parts, thinking about it, and yeah. trying to to learn them. I get that. Uh, I think I think we really never changed the the approach. I mean, we always work in the same way, even though maybe in in the practical aspect of writing we have changed because we were in different locations. That's that's the only difference, you know. But for me, like the 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 biggest um, aspiration is to come up with some something that's uh, challenging and interesting, at least. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. not, I would say new. It's very difficult to do something mm -hmm. new, yeah. new, but something that's you know original. I always. Uh, strive for something that I've never heard before in terms of what's um, in my capabilities, you know, on my instruments or in the uh, rhythmic conceptual area, let's say. I would like to apply this concept in this way. But that really needs to match with the, the energy that we want to provide because we don't want people to come to the concerts and take notes. So yeah, for me, it's very important to write down something that's interesting, but that doesn't have to overcome the um, spontaneous energy and uh, the emotional charge and deliver that the music that we write needs to have. So we're, I'm, I'm never, I'm never uh, choosing the, interesting idea over the um, emotional strength of a part, let's say. So that's what I try to combine every time we write, we write music, pretty much. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, so we, should we start with our question that we prepared for you? Yeah, I mean, it feels like the interview already started, but we're just, yeah. we're not just following the order. But I don't care. Yeah. You know, just what, ask okay. whatever. It's all right. It's all good. Okay. Well, uh, just as a beginning, uh, when did you start playing drums, and why or how? I started in 1994. Uh, the local marching band came to my um, elementary school making some demonstrations of, of the instruments. I always wanted to play any instrument, to be honest, uh, even though when I was two years old, I used to play with uh, pots and pans uh, and, and, you know, and uh, wooden spoons and stuff like that. But my parents really never took it too seriously. So when the marching band came and, and did some demonstrations, I really wanted to, to play music. And the first instrument I got, I wanted to try was the clarinet. <laughs> but I Surprise. couldn't get any sound. I couldn't get any sound out, out of it. So the teacher said, well, why, why don't you try with trumpet? <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's try trumpet, you know? And after a couple of months of doing stuff like... <laughs> That's an F, by the way. And uh, <laughs> I was ready to quit music, honestly. I was like, nah, I don't know if I like music as much as I thought. <laughs> And then yeah. uh, the trumpet teacher was like, hey, why don't you try drums? Like, why don't you go for the most stupid instrument we have? So, uh, and I was like, <laughs> exactly. And I was like, well, yeah, I'd love to. Actually, drums has always been my, you know, favorite instrument, if possible. 
but living in an apartment, I I don't figure the way to actually play drums in my house. And they were like, you don't have to worry about that. You can actually go uh, to our rehearsal room and practice over there. So the cool thing about uh, the local marching band was that um, lessons were free of charge. And, and I could go to their space anytime I wanted to practice. And, 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 and the rest is history. That's how it went. So been playing since 1994 and never stopped <laughs> pretty much <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> that's great that's also very uh it was lucky for you that uh you could just practice in the in the real room for free because that's a big a big advantage actually yeah absolutely i i, I have to say that i had the same experience but, but with trombone uh, or trombone in english uh and since i'm very lazy even lazier than simon i wouldn't want to <laughs> sh sh shift the key and the clef and so i switched to bass directly <laughs> 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 i was already able to read uh music in the, the bass the bass key so the bass clef uh also because i studied piano and just bass just one note at a time yeah easier. fair enough Fair enough. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> no one hears you, so that's good. <laughs> well, I mean, they notice is if you fuck up. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why I always play with the volume down. <laughs> you, you won't. You will notice any difference. So <laughs> it works. It worked so far. So that's good. I guess so. Yeah. And you can always. You can always say you're playing jazz if you're. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, but you have to, re to re repeat the error if you exactly. want to. Exactly. One is an error, twice is jazz. Yeah. <laughs> That's the rule. Yeah. So, since you started to play drums, when did you decide to become a professional drummer? What brought you to this decision? Um, I think even before getting to high school, I mean, I've done. Uh, I've done the Liceo Scientifico High School, okay? And the only reason uh, I made that choice was that uh, that was the school um, and with the, with the timetable with less hours to spend at school, basically, <laughs> so that I could practice drums at home in the afternoon. I mean, the first year of school was only like... Uh, probably 20, 25 hours a week. It was like four hours per day and, and Thursday was like five hours and that was it. So like 12.30, I, I was home, you know, cooking myself the lunch and then, okay, good. I can practice drums. So, I mean, like officially I decided for that reason. And then after a couple of years, I, you know, made the announcement to my parents and i was like hey you know what after this i just want to play and they were like okay that's cool but you make sure you finish the school first and i'm like dude yeah absolutely i love going to school so but no university or stuff like that even though my father tried to convince me that <laughs> the word it's full of you know there there are plenty of professional musicians who are also graduated in some sort of discipline like and i'm like sure yeah can you give me some example and he was like uh, uh i don't know but i'm sure they exist and i'm like sorry i won't take it as a you know motivation so yeah i'll just play it's drums if that's okay for you and he was like yeah all right do whatever you want. So it, it's pretty much an exception, but maybe didn't know that Brian May is, is graduated in the physics. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, he may he, he made the example of uh, Enzo Yannacci, all right. <laughs> but, but the point is, yeah, because he is like a, 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 a surgeon or a doctor or something like that. Yes. But the point is, like, I was talking more about professional musicians in terms of 
uh, session man, session man instead of just you know rock stars. I get that Brian May is actually actually a rocket scientist, but he, he doesn't do sessions. He's a rock legend, and that's it. You know, he His, doesn't need to do them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, yes, of course. Uh, actually, I think that session musicians are uh, extremely um, focused on the instrument and they have to study a lot. I think they couldn't have time to graduate in anything of course. else. I mean, they might do it, but it's quite uncommon. You know, the amount of time and dedication that, you know, becoming a, a professional musician and that session man requires it's you know it rarely rarely matches the the availability of time and energy that you need to have in order to also graduate at, at you know university that's at least that's my two cents unless you're a genius mm -hmm. which I'm not so uh, I just decided to hit things for a living <laughs> well, you, you succeeded. I, 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 <laughs> I had a, I had a similar problem when I went to the university because uh, I knew that uh, I, I wanted to be good with drums, but also I wanted to be good with the university. And but I knew that uh, I needed I I needed more time to study one things, one thing or or the other. And uh, actually, I had a university mate that was very, very good studying. And uh, he, he was very, very good, far more good than me. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't need so much time to, to study. And, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and I figured that, man, if I want to be as good as him, I have to study a lot. And I have to um, uh, stop uh, playing drums, and then I, I decided see. I prefer to play drums. <laughs> I see. I see. I, I had a um, classmate at high school. He was the same. He, he used to like read the newspaper during the class, during the lesson, and then the professor was asking him like, "Hey, Zanoni, what's the answer to the question I just asked?" And he was giving the answer right away. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how can you do that? Like, it's fucking crazy. So, I mean, uh, to answer the, the second part of the question, which is what brought you to this decision? I mean, the point is I've always uh, had this sort of approach to life, this thought process that if somebody else has done this before, then I can. So if there are plenty of pro musicians in the world, why the hell can I not be one of them? You yeah, know, there has to be a way. Yeah. You know, so like, who am I? Like this most stupid piece of shit that you know. Like I just wanted to play drums, and I and I've seen plenty of people doing it. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just do that. Doesn't look impossible. So that's what I've done. I I, I thought it. Exactly in the same way, uh, my parents forced me to do you to the university, and, but uh, deep in my heart, I wanted to to be a drummer. And at that point, I I made that that decision. I uh, mean, it's not, it's not a good moment to be a pro musician, especially in Italy right now. <laughs> but we'll see we'll see what happens in the next month. It's going to be, I think it's going to be an interesting period. Uh, the, I think there will be a sort of um, reset. Mm -hmm. Sort of. It depends. Like, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a big question. Let's not just talk about this. But yeah, no, uh, <laughs> no uh, uh, yeah. I, I get you because here everything just stopped and. Uh, yeah, we, we cannot do what we used to do, but this means that we are all leveled at the same level. Uh, we have to start from scratch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, what, what I meant by this is uh, 
whoever was struggling to make it professionally will probably have to give up unfortunately yep. this is what i mean by reset you know because there i think there's too many people who behave unprofessionally mm -hmm. and those are the ones who will be probably cut off by this situation and i'm not hoping for this i'm just thinking and i'm actually looking around and seeing what's going on so i think that's that's what's going to happen but you know who, who knows we'll see i am a bad person and i'm hoping this happens <laughs> to be honest. no because i i've had a lot of experiences with a lot of people saying that they are professionals but they are not being a professional uh, which is all about this is all about how you uh, work and how you behave uh, in music uh, and everything that goes around it. Uh, there are a lot of people that uh, are not professional at all. And I think that we won't miss them in case that they have to give up, to be honest. And I'm a bad person. <laughs> But everyone knows. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. You can take a screenshot of this and make uh, a T-shirt. Because I agree. I just want copyright. Oh, God. Fucking awesome. Uh, Simon, about what you were saying before, you should write a book about it. <laughs> I'm writing it. I'm writing it. Don't worry. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh, this is cool. an inside joke. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Emma, I want to ask you: uh, which are the albums, or the bands, or even the drummers that influenced you the most? Jeez! <laughs> Too much people. That's <laughs> Too many people. That's a lot going on there. Um, all right. Let me let me think. I've been listening, I mean, I've listened to so many different uh, styles of music. I really love all, pretty much all music which is done properly, which is done well, which is done with heart and passion. Uh, and, and to me, it's also difficult to define uh, influence because i think most of it it's not even conscious to me because mm -hmm. uh okay let's say this there has been a period uh in my life probably from let's say uh the 12 13 years old till 18 19 years old uh, where I was only listening to basically two styles of music. One was metal, right? And the other one was uh, fusion, okay? So Chick Corea and Dave Weckl's band and all that cheesy music, but, you know, so wonderfully played. So, and I had... You know, two specific reasons for that. You know, I was listening to metal because I was enjoying the energy of the music on one side. And on the other side, I was listening to fusion because I loved the complexity of drum parts and and how wonderful Dave Weckl was on those records. So that's probably the the biggest imprinting I got in the early days, you know, because I remember... Uh, talking to um, some older guys when I was like 13 or 14 years old and they were like, oh, you should listen to Korn. Uh, David Silveria is a badass drummer. And I'm like, I listen to Dave Wackle. <laughs> like super <laughs> not, you know? So, uh, but then like, I, I, of course, I like I discovered so many other great drummers and, and I mean, to list my influences we could stay here like for hours because truly I enjoy listening to, let's say, 
uh, blues. I really love like um, uh, Robin Ford, uh, John Lee Hooker, uh, BB King, or even like I love reggae. I listen to Bob Marley. I've listened to a, a lot of like metal recordings, uh, funk, R&B, electronic music, jazz. Dude, like anything, anything. I'm omnivorous uh, <laughs> in terms of music. So really it's difficult to me to, to answer this question. And, 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 and it's been the same for drummers. You know, I've been a huge Weco supporter in the early days. But then, then when I found out the existence of uh, Vinny Colaiuto, for example, he has become my all-time hero. But the, the, the thing is, it's been interesting because I, I can recognize I went through different phases. I've been into the Dennis Chambers phase, the Benny Grab phase, the Gary Novak phase, and I don't know, so many, so many, one after the other. And, and I kept, you know, adding pieces of vocabulary uh, that I've taken from so many different drummers. And the thing that I very humbly tried to do was to actually take um, phrasing from different styles and and take them to what I do with my band, you know? When I first heard uh, what we now know as gospel chops, mm -hmm. I was completely blown away i was like what the fuck is this i i want to play that way so i started listening to all those drummers and and try to incorporate the the, the sort of style that we they were playing and and then i was loving it so much and i was like why can't i actually use this in the music i write with my band and that's where the magic happened at some point Right. That's how new music is is created. That's yeah. how history of music is made. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. that's great. Uh, also, you said Vinicola Yuta, which is maybe <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite drummers ever. To be honest, and he, I think that he is the perfect example of a great musician who is very talented in the studio, particularly in the studio, because uh, he has a sound very specific, and he is uh he is able to give you the live feeling even if he is in the studio and he has an amazing sense of groove uh, i think that he he could play drums alone with any other instrument and it could sound musical are you talking about vinnie vinnie yes oh yeah oh my god i mean like he's done he has done records of so many different styles. Like, I don't know if you guys knew it. Like, he is on uh, The System Has Failed of from Megadeth. Mm -hmm. And the year before, he has recorded the Rock Swing, Rock Swings record from Polanka with the uh, Swing Jazz Big Band. And they both sound incredible. And, and he has done everything in between. He's played with, you know, Frank Zappa, Sting, Alan Oldsworth. I mean, like, it's all around. It's, it's probably the only one capable of achieving such a, a diversity of styles and still uh, being authentic. You know, it's, I mean, like, he's an alien. Like, he's, a, he's an alien of his own. Uh, <clears throat> Simon knows it, but uh, I admire his job since uh, I found out that he recorded for Tiziano Ferro. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. The the song name is I del Isole negli occhi. If you mm. don't recall it, just go and nope. listen to it. Okay, just go and listen to it. It will blow your mind. Of it's, course. It's something that is uh, apparently very simple. But if you listen, and you're a drummer, so you will, <laughs> you will <laughs> just notice it. It is extremely complex. It is something that is almost unplayable. Just go and listen to it. Yeah, and you, I, will. You, I will. You'll tell me. I will. 
Well, I mean, like if you think about like um Hi, Carlos. Seven Hi, Carlos. days. Seven days, yeah. If you think about seven days, I mean the and the and what he's played on that song and that record. I mean, he basically at the end of the song, he was basically soloing in in five four or five eight, whatever you want to think of it. And and that song is so popular, you know, like the the I don't know, like the baker would just <laughs> sing along to the song while making bread, you know. And Vinny was like, that's you know, he he actually brought that to to pop music. And no one else has done that before him. Yes, he is musical, even when doing something extremely hard to play. Oh, yeah. But he just make it seem simple and listenable, which is unique. It's something. Oh, yeah. It's totally. huge, but yeah. It, we can I'm go on talking about Vinicola Utah all night. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so down like, for that. <laughs> <laughs> me as well. But let's talk about Deathstrange, actually, which is your band. We it uh, is. already it is. said that, yes. And when and how Deathstrange was born, and how many and which albums did you release? Just talk, talk about Deathstrange, which is a great uh, band. So the this is basically the the second lineup we have ever had. So basically, we have been with the same lineup since uh, 2007. And then uh, Gabriel, the bass player, left the band in September last year. So we are now four people in the band. And we are not looking uh, to take another bass player in the band. So for now, we're staying four people. And uh, the original lineup started out in 2005 i think as every you know young kid formed band they started out playing covers and and writing their own music they had done uh, i think a couple of eps and uh after the second or or third ep they've done they managed to sign with uh, Howling Bull Records in Japan, who paid for the entire recording of, of the first album, right? At that point, I was in the band, and also Gabriel, the bass player, and Ralph, the bass player, uh, the guitar player, um, arrived in the band. The two original band members are, in fact, Paolo, the singer, and Matteo, the guitar player. So, uh, but I mean, we can easily say this band has been like this since forever because basically uh, um, the history, if we think in terms of uh, albums, has started with the five of us in the band, right? So the first record was actually basically Matteo's music because we entered the band but the songs were already there and he recorded probably 80 percent of the guitars he recorded bass and um i entered the band when they were already recording the album so in the first record urban being there's it's not me on drums it's just programmed mm -hmm. all right because there, there was no time and budget for record drums on that. So I actually started recording drums from The King is Fat and All, which is the second record, which is also the the really the first album we started, you know, writing all together, basically. Because the you know, Urban Being, as I said, it's basically Matteo's music. And and the process of writing all together was more and more from you know every album so we actually released our fifth record uh, one year ago one year almost exactly one year ago and uh it's been the third one out uh via um, metal blade mm -hmm. and and then we had the two previous records with um coroner records which is an italian label 
And uh, yeah, I mean, we write whatever the fuck comes to our minds. <laughs> That's how we do music. <laughs> you can hear that. <laughs> when you listen to it, it's just crazy. Uh, I love it, to be honest. Thank you. And there are, some, you know, uh, there are some, um, it really depends. I think like um, everyone in the band has a different, um, uh, let's say, role in writing music. Uh, of course, I'm taking care of the rhythmic part and the rhythmic arrangements. And I usually come up with ideas and, and, uh, 99% of the time, whenever you listen to something extremely complicated and, and that you don't know what the fuck's going on, that's my fault. <laughs> Usually it's like that. But for example, uh, I remember uh, writing, uh, Are You Kidding Me? No, the song, which is probably the craziest song we've ever written in, in 12 years. And I remember uh, going to Matteo's house with a bunch of ideas I had, and he had a bunch of ideas as well. And we took my ideas and Matteo's ideas and we started combining, and the song basically came out in one afternoon. <laughs> that's, <awesome. laughs> that's, that's the best way to create a great mess, and uh, that's good because <laughs> you were able to, to put it in music and then play it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually I've studied piano like 15 years ago. And when I was studying piano, I used to actually start recording stuff and writing down some melodies and shit. And then I had all these ideas sitting there on the shelf. And I'm like, Matt, you know what? I might want you to check out, you know, these ideas that I have. So I basically tailored it and, and made it in a way that made sense and and he loved it and we just created the song so so sometimes happened that way some other time uh like for example uh purania it's a song that originated by the fact that i was pointing out that we we didn't have any song with that type of groove. I'm like, we don't have any song that goes like do do pa do 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 pa do 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 pa. And then like Paolo started singing the the riff immediately. And then Matteo was like, oh, oh, oh hold on, wait a second. And that's how the riff was born. Hmm. You know, sometimes stuff happened that way. That's that's well, fun. That's best way for me to make music just have yeah. no limits do whatever you want and have fun that's how you go for great music yeah. in my opinion. well actually I, I watched a lot of videos of you guys um, hanging out together uh, doing stuff together uh, there is a lot of friendship going on of with, course. Uh, yeah. with you so uh, I wanted to ask you as, as, I, as I saw that you um uh, add a lot of great tour around the world with very good uh, and awesome bands uh do you have any interesting funny story to tell about the, those tour those tours? This, oh, well i mean <laughs> i would have well, plenty yeah. of stories uh the ones that you can say of course uh, yeah i mean i mean i think i think i got an episode um we have done a bunch of uh, tours and, and festivals in Europe uh, renting a, um, an RV, uh, a, a caravan, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Camper. So yes. I think we, we were going to play in a festival in somewhere in Germany. And uh, we basically just crossed the border between Switzerland and Germany. And uh, police pulled us over. So we had to stop. And, um, and they started the search because basically they've seen a band. So they were, I was 
wearing dreadlocks already so they were expecting to find like tons of drag everywhere uh which is not the case by the way you know just personal use for some of us and uh and so basically they started you know the search and uh everybody was like uh singularly taken by the policeman okay put your arms this way and they started touching and then <laughs> Gabriel, the bass player, was the first one, and uh, and the guy was touching him all around. At, at at one point, the moment for him to to touch his balls <laughs> arrived. Right, so the policeman <laughs> touching Gabriel's ball to find if he had drugs. And Gabriel was like, was like this. Oh, like this. <laughs> Not even a kiss. <laughs> and, and in that very same moment, the other policeman uh, was calling Ralph, uh, whose family name is Salati, and and he was like Salati. I've seen you've lost your driving license three times. <laughs> Because they have all the record from you know everything you've done that that the police have taken notes. So yeah, that was definitely a funny moment that I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the feeling because we own an RV and we toured a lot with with it. And when we went to Germany, actually, we have been stopped. Also, we didn't do anything to avoid it because we painted it black. So it's a black <laughs> RV with a caravan, uh, with a trailer. Uh, yep. We uh, have been stopped a lot, but when they do searches, if there is not a female officer, they cannot uh, touch the girl. So the suggestion is take a female in the band. That's what we did. So they yeah, won't that's the only reason why that, you that's the only yes, things, yes, right? yes. We, we 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 hate female vocals, but uh, we <laughs> we were going through a lot of searches by the police and then we decided to take a female voice. Yes. <laughs> that's that's the only reason. And so what are your plans for, for the future for, for the stage? Building some highways. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It works better than music, actually. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, uh, I'm sure you guys had the same problems. We had, like, I think, total of like more than 20 shows cancelled because of this um, pandemic. Lockdown. Yeah. So I don't know. I, we're actually in the process of understanding if everything is going to be moved in the same way, but in 2021. Uh, in the meantime, the idea is to start, to start writing new music and um, to start working with a different type of musicians, uh, creators or artists. Uh, for example, people who can compose like electronic music. So maybe starting from there, that can spark some different uh, creativity streams, you know. Um, so we'll see what comes out. The idea is to just write one song and, and release it maybe next year mm -hmm. and see how it goes and then and then just do a full record depending on how satisfied we are with the sound and 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 the way of composing and writing music that way um, and hopefully getting some tours and gigs when the fucking pandemic is over that's that's the idea pretty much okay do you yes. remember your first live performance and what was your best live performance ever? Mine or, or, or with the band? Your, yours, yeah. Mine? Well, yeah. I had I was 12 years old uh, with my with the band that I had back then. Uh, um, playing in the in the village square 
like two minutes from home uh, on a hybrid kit, like real symbols, but like electronic pads <laughs> uh, hosted by, you know, a, a band of uh, professionals over there. So we played like a few songs and um, I remember it was fun. I was happy to be playing live. I was like, yeah, this is great. I am great. <laughs> you know, like when you when you're 12, 13, you don't just I mean, at least I didn't give a fuck. I'm like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> so yeah, for um, some of some of us it's still going on, this thing. Yeah, we, we don't give a... <laughs> I mean that's that's the idea. Then you listen back to yourself and you say, No, I sucked. But then you know, when I was playing, it felt great. And the best, the best performance. Oh my God, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. It's difficult to tell. It's difficult to tell. I, uh, definitely. Well, probably the most memorable moment. And I remember also having played very well that night was the release party of um, Are You Kidding Me Now? Because we played at the, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, live, live Forum Club, yes. which was under the uh, Asago Forum. Uh, the, yes. Yeah. They, they closed the, the, the club uh, right now. But the capacity of the, of the club, I think, was around uh, probably five or 600 people. And back then, you know, we still were a small band, you know, because Kidding was the first uh, ever released record uh, with Metal Blade. So, I mean, we we were expecting a few people to come, but not as many to justify, you know, pre-sales on like Ticket One circuits or stuff like that. Uh, but then what happened was, there was so much hype for that record that something like eight or 900 people showed up. So wow. 300 people had to, couldn't get in basically. So we, we finished the, the concert and I remember walking outside the club and still hundreds of people being outside the club. And I remember three guys uh, walking to me and say, hey, man, we came straight from Puglia, straight from Bari with the bus. <laughs> Probably like 15 hours drive or something like that. And they couldn't get in. And 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 I felt like heartbroken, honestly. And because, you know, like I really wanted them to enjoy the, the show, but they couldn't because they arrived late. So, but but apart from that, the energy that night was unbelievable. I barely remember anything closer to that. It's fucking insane, totally insane. We have someone saying that he was outside of the club too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were there? <laughs> he was. Oh shit! Yeah, that was. And and the point was like. Uh, we, I think we have done sound check and then we were in the, in the green room and the support band started playing and we had no idea of, you know, what was the um, attendance, how many people were there, et cetera, et cetera. And then the tour manager came in and he was like, guys, you will not believe what I'm telling you. So I had pictures for you and, and he, and he showed up pictures of like hundreds of people outside the club, you know, entering. And, and he was like, they will never fit. So we had to, to, li to leave them outside somehow. And we were like, what? Fucking crazy. Nuts. So, yeah. And, and from then on, I mean, Italy has always been a, a very great place for us to play. And, and I think it's very rare for an Italian band to have such a, you know, uh, great and supportive fan base as we do. It's not very common. Like there are, exactly, there are so many great, amazing Italian metal bands, but they do better 
in other countries in Italy. It's weird. But yeah. we, we don't. Like, we actually love playing Italy. Italy shows are great. Incredible, yeah. Yeah, th that's pretty unique. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> that's that's how you say. Uh, yeah. I'm thinking about maybe the most popular here, Metal Act, is Lacuna Coil. I think. It is, for sure, yeah. But even uh, it depends uh, a lot of the part of Italy where you go because they are very popular in Milan, for example, but in Rome or the southern part of Italy, they are not as popular. Uh, so uh, Italy is weird and kind of thing, but that's yeah, the region. I mean, of course, like we also have regions where we do better than, than others. But I think like there are some regions that they're just difficult for everyone. Yeah, it's also difficult to move in those areas, so uh, it's hard to reach the... the, the yeah, the but even, the if go, even if you go to Liguria, <laughs> that's a very fucking difficult <laughs> place. Where that doesn't matter the venue. You're never getting like a sold-out show over there. In fact, we're not going there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything about Liguria. No, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to I'm sound racist about about the region. I'm just saying that it's very difficult to do concert over there. No, yeah, uh, it's Italy is a mess. <laughs> it's very, it's very difficult to read it, uh, even for Italians, and it, I find it always very hard to explain uh, it to foreign people. You know, uh, they. I think that like four or five lives ago, there was uh, a guy saying, oh, uh, what, isn't uh, metal very popular in Europe? And it's hard to explain to people that Europe is not a nation and Italy, no, exactly. Italy is very different from, let's say, I don't know, Germany, for example, or France oh or yes, Sweden. Right. Yes, but even inside of Italy, there are a lot of differences between regions <laughs> yeah so I mean, it's hard to explain yeah yeah absolutely. well i mean if you think that there are so many people who think that africa is a country <laughs> so <laughs> the, uh, yeah. i saw a video uh, of a girl in the united states pointing at a map and saying that iraq was actually italy she was oh, well, I Italy. Think, <laughs> but I, I think I've seen the same sort of um, it was like a, a, an article somewhere and um, one of the most like they were asking Americans to actually fill in the the countries with their respective names and the most common mistakes were the ones that they were written in the article and um, and the most mistaken one uh, for Italy was Norway. Like most of the people failing the test were writing Italy on Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's similar. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, like I can actually, but I, I, I don't blame them. I mean, I don't think I could ever write the name of each each state of the United States in the map. Yeah. I could do yeah. some of them, of course, but not all of them. Also because all the central states are just rectangles. So difficult to recognize them. Yeah, I know where California is. Of course. New York, uh, Washington, and uh, uh, Florida, because they have the shapes, you know, I can just recognize the shapes, but yeah. uh, the central state, like, I don't know, Montana or uh, Colorado and all that, that, I don't know where they are. They yeah. are in the United States, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I don't blame them. It's all good. Me neither, yes. Uh, so... Simon, go on with the question. I, I, yeah. I can see that you are about to ask something. <laughs> uh, man, I know that you play a lot of styles of music, so can you talk uh, of some of your um, extra project projects besides metal music? Yeah, sure, yeah. 
I um, I'm actually really happy because in the last couple of years I started playing with um, several great musicians uh, in different projects uh, playing completely different music than I do with Death Stretch, which I think it's something that I really need uh, and make me feel, uh, I don't want to say complete, but it's really complimentary to the music that I play mm -hmm. with my band. So I have this uh, quartet, which is called Possibilities, with uh, Luca Pasqua, who's a very... Uh, amazing guitar player and he writes all the music is a very proficient uh, writer he writes a lot of songs and they're all great and the and the interesting part of that is they of course stay in in that sort of like genre area but really the the set list is challenging because you have like the traditional blues modern blues r b funk reggae soul jazz it's like it's every style like every song is different and and it's challenging and i love playing with them because there's great musicians william micastro is a bass player erica de lazarian voice it's a fun great project i love that music um then i also have this new quartet we are writing music together it's taking quite a long time because we all leave far away from each other and we're always very busy but we're coming to a point where the songs are almost ready and i have this new quartet with um bass hero federico malaman mm. and um gianni royati on guitars and marco scipione on uh, saxophone and that's uh that's fusion in the real sense of the word it's not like 90s fusion or 80s fusion it's it's the fact that we're you know actually making a fusion of our own influences so it's very difficult for me to define the the music that we actually play it's something pretty unique and it's great to be playing with like monsters like fede you know like it's mm -hmm. it's great great and then i also have a trio which is called amai rama it's like instrumental fusion rock stuff with uh, Daniele Gregolino on the guitar and Ernesto Getzi on K guitar. It's an interesting sounding trio as well. And then uh, it might just be born a new quartet, which I'm not going to talk about because it's still top secret. Oh. So, but you know, it's you know, stuff going on. We're I'm good. curious, but I won't ask anything since you don't. <laughs> yeah. Why did you say it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I might have forgotten something, but you know, that's that's what comes to my mind. I'm I'm actually uh, talking to to a lot of musicians lately, and there's this will of collaborate and do music together. So these are the main uh, and stable projects that are existing but i'm i am sure i have upcoming collaborations with other musicians that i haven't mentioned but you know that's pretty much that's what internet does as well <laughs> okay uh as you as you are my teacher uh, i wanted to to ask you a personal question sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> when when did you start teaching drums and why too early. <laughs> Too early. Uh, because I started teaching when I was 16 years old. Okay. And my first student was, and the, the funny thing is that my first student was 24. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, to me, teaching back then it was like because he he heard i was i was you know a decent drummer back then you know a good drummer for for the small community of the village where i live i was a good drummer okay even though i was 16 years old so he asked me he was like hey like would you teach me drums and i'm like eh, i've never done that before but i guess i can do what 
my teacher does with me and translate the knowledge to you. So that's what I've done, basically. I, I try to, you know, just memorize what were the, the first lessons that I've done with my teachers about and just do those lessons to him without adding anything of my personality because I was too young. I didn't have any experience. But, mm -hmm. you know, you need to start from somewhere. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I started because they asked me to. And then I find out years later that I really enjoyed doing it. <laughs> Does it count as an answer? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. What about you, Simon? When did you start and why? Uh, I Most start... of all, why? <laughs> <laughs> I started be, uh, when I was 21, and I started because someone asked me to. And um, I, I found out that uh, it was uh, funny. And uh, actually... Um, I, I grew a, a lot of passion in uh, in uh, in doing it, so I, I keep I keep teaching <laughs> just because I like it. Oh, no, but I, I mean, thought... like as it was as I was telling at the beginning of the live stream, like Simon is is a very smart guy, and and he's also very sensitive, and he has the understanding of what's needed. Uh, in order to be a good teacher, uh, and and it's not necessarily related with the amount of knowledge that you have in the field of drumming. You know, it's it really requires uh, a complete different set of uh, knowledge and abilities uh, beside being able to play drums, and he has that. So I'm good with that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good all. I think we have a, a question from someone. And uh, this is a suggestion. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> hello. Will you have songs in Italian? I think he's asking to you guys, though. I'm not I sure. I think he's asking to anyone. So whoever wants to uh, answer this. Simon, will we have songs in Italian? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows what the future will? Uh, I can tell. Uh, well, I mean, for, if I had to answer for, um, yes. on behalf of my band, the answer would be no. Yeah, I think <laughs> that the, the, the long answer for us is absolutely no, and the short answer <laughs> is no. <laughs> but Simon thinks that who knows, but I can say. You would have the answer. <laughs> I mean, is no. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be super honest. Uh, the, probably the only uh, person, the only artist that I've ever met that I know that is, that is, you know, um, that managed to keep the the right attitude for in, you know, rock and hard rock and extreme music. Even if he's singing in Italian, is uh, Filippo Dall'Inferno, who's a guitar player, singer, uh, and I and I recorded his album like ten years ago, and it's still a great piece of music. And he sings in Italian, and he's the only one that you know. It doesn't bother me. I listen to it, and it's Italian. And I'm like, this is fucking cool. And it almost never happens when I hear somebody, you know, singing in Italian uh, in, a, in a style that's a bit heavier than pop. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah. big I up for it. Yeah, I think that the Italian could sound weird with this, with a heavier, heavier genre of music uh, because Italian has its musicality. Uh, I think it doesn't fit, or maybe we are too used to 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 hear pop music. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Opera music was born with Italian, so opera yes. music makes sense with Italian. But rock music wasn't born with Italian; it was born with English. So that's why English makes sense with that music. It's as simple as that, for you know, as far as I'm concerned. 
Well, yes, you, you maybe you're right. It's a cultural thing. Uh, I agree. It is. That's I mean, you can learn the language of music, but then the 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 way the words sound. There's nothing you can do about that. And I'm actually, uh, and I've learned uh, even in in pop music in Italian, they they the the actually the good producers they pay attention to the sound of the words as well. I've done this recording, um, I think November last year, for this um, singer song songwriter that I play with. Oh, that's another side project that I have. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I play with this singer songwriter uh, called Maurizio Pirovano, and he does like pop rock in Italian, basically. And um, it was very interesting because we worked with uh, one of the top uh, sound engineer and producers in Italy, which is Lorenzo Cazzaniga, who is the uh, sound engineer for the Festival di Sanremo, and he also produces artists such as. Claudio Vaglioni and uh, Negramaro and uh, like big, big names in Italy. Okay. And it was, it was interesting because he was pointing out all the uh, words in the lyrics that weren't sounding good for a chorus or whatever that was. Something that I would never had thought. And, and, but he's so into that that he, could easily point out this word doesn't sound good there because of the way that actual language sound. So yeah. it's it's an interesting thing. And 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 usually like English in music just sounds way better. You know, you rarely have problems in having like words or, or sentences that don't sound good. Yeah, it's, a lot of monosyllables and and all that stuff in Italian we don't have. We do have words with a lot of syllables, and uh, they 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 have their sound. If you just move the accent, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't make sense. Uh, I, I I learned the same thing working and producing uh, for uh, Gianluca Grignani, which I'm working with right now, and I can say that. Uh, maybe 70% of the time is spent about choosing the right words to use on specific part of the songs, it, which is, I think it's crazy. I, I, I cannot do that. But I get that. I totally get that because we have uh, some some phonetics that they're not just as musical as, as English, you know? Yes. So I, I agree. Yeah. Maybe translate some old songs and make them as a bonus track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but is this uh, Van? Are you Italian or are you just <sighs> curious to listen to songs uh, in, in Italian and for the sake of you know hearing the sound? Yeah, I, I think it's the second one because if you take any song in any language and you translate it, uh, it doesn't sound good. I can say that there are a lot of cover songs here in Italy, for example, that comes from uh, other songs in English and they change totally the, 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 the lyrics. Uh, I can think about the most stupid one. Which Adriano Celentano has done a career with that. For example, <laughs> yeah, but he was inventing words. Okay. Of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I was thinking about uh, Marco Mazzini with Nothing Else Matters. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it changed that all the words epic. and all the sense, which is what, what a yes. bad example, though. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it would sound. But there are, uh, well, there are also worse, worse cases like Nino. Right, there is the Vasco, Vasco Rossi despa, uh, dispari sopra. That well, comes, that, that's, comes, well, but the point is, is. It's you know Vasco what what he has done he just wanted to keep the same sound of the words this part is over English you know and just you know what's the closest I can get in Italian that's it <laughs> and I also have a very uh, funny story about uh, the recording of the drums of that song because I, I played in this. Uh, drum festival in in Australia a few years ago, and one of the drummers 
uh, at the festival where um, was um, Greg Bissonnette, mm -hmm. who actually used to be one of the top session uh, drummers in the nineties. He was one of the busiest working drummer, you know, in, in all the nineties. And um, and he was telling me he recorded the song in this studio in somewhere in Venice, and uh, the tracking room was on a different floor um, from the control room. So he was tracking and then going upstairs, and <laughs> upstairs it was Vasco giving him directions, and uh, and Vasco was just was just like you know greg because gli spari sopra sono per noi no <laughs> and he was like ah i got you Vasco. and then he just went downstairs and did another day you know that, that was the only you know direction Vasco could give him and, you know if you if you hear the story from him he's a really funny dude he's a nice guy too Oh, this explains a lot. Oh yes. well, oh well, that's quite a that's quite the answer I was waiting for. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, that well, makes... Italian singers uh, uh, have a lot of uh, success in Russia, actually. Oh yes, Toto Cotugno, uh, yeah. Al Romina I'm... Albano. Albano yeah. You would be surprised. You would be surprised for. Um... I mean, I've been to China several times at this point, and I found out that they know perfectly Bella Ciao. Yeah, that's very international. Also, it's very actual. Uh, well, they used it uh, also in uh, uh, La Casa de Papel, which is uh, Money Heist, I think, in English, mm -hmm. uh, as the official song of the the tv series mm -hmm. and it's maybe the most no, the second most known italian song in the world after uh italiano or really? no wait yeah uh the second or the third which is uh maybe volare I probably in the blue dipinto di blue yeah in the blue yeah uh but yeah we are international <laughs> I mean, I I'm happy as long as Russian loves us. Better they love us than they they hate us. So, oh yes, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but no one hates Italians. We no, are the... actually. I'm telling you, I've also played the drum festival in Moscow uh, two or three years ago, and uh, I managed to make the audience laugh. That's, that's great. A typical task, but I made it. <laughs> <laughs> that was your main objective. Be, be, be yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> because, because also, you know, like not every not everyone speaks, you know, very good and fluent English in, in Russia. So it was also because of the mimic and everything. So you know, it's gone. And then I came back home with a terrible uh, food poisoning. Oh. Mm. I oh, never man. felt so bad in my life. I was like, you know, throwing up and and for like a couple of days and fever and just I was just laying on this couch for two days. And the third day, like Jesus Christ, I resuscitated. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I feel okay right now, so I guess I can just go and prepare my suitcase because the day after I went to China. <laughs> That's what you get for making Russian people laugh. <laughs> <laughs> don't, just don't do that. <laughs> Let them learn. Uh, so we have another question about you Ooh, and your okay. lesson with Simon, but you already answered that two times, and the third time yep. would be just <laughs> enough. So let's just skip that question and let's go straight to the other one uh what are your hobbies and interests besides playing and teaching drums if you have any i do have too many actually too many interests i actually uh like reading um personal growth books mainly 
both in English and Italian. Depends how lazy I am. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm very much into that, and I like a, um, psychology as well. But I, I'm also interested in um, econ economy and economical politics, as well as finance and uh, personal finance as well, and um, hol holistic medicine as well. Like it really, you know, like plenty of things. That, but I, I don't have enough time to to pursue them all. So it depends on the period, and and my. My biggest issue is that pretty much every day I wake up with a new idea and then so, so that's the reason why I have so so many um, projects that I started and never finished because every day there's a new one. <laughs> so <laughs> I would have to actually stop being so curious and actually finish ev everything that I started. So I feel much lighter now. But... I always feel overwhelmed by the amount of things that, you know, goes through my head every day, pretty much. This reminds me of some drummer I used to know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's under me in, right now. Simon, do you see yourself in this description? I mean, like... You know, that's why I said, like, he's a smart guy, because he understands <laughs> he, he, he just must go beyond drums. It's not all about drums and music, you know? What is what he doing? doing what, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's me. Oh, wait a second. Okay, now now, now it's me. The other, the other. No, There's okay. no Simon. <laughs> so, I, I feel like I have a, a big chest. <laughs> and a very small head, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Get it is very stupid. Very good. Yeah, I, I had a, a question for you, uh, the, the most stupid question tonight, maybe because we oh, we interview interviewed uh, um, many people with uh, nerd interests. So we spoke about uh, superheroes and comic books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if you have to choose one superpower, <laughs> what would you choose? Teletransportation. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> easy, easy. It would save me so much time. That's because of Homer Simpson, right? You can take the beer out of the fridge without moving from your uh, I wasn't thinking about that, but that that's definitely an upside, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It, it works. Yeah, I mean, it's the most useful superpower. Uh, I wouldn't pick any other one. I mean, it's it's you don't need to fly if you can teleport yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> Yes, also you don't have to wonder what anything looks like. You just can just teleport there and watch exactly. it yourself. Exactly. Uh, it would be a good match between that and time travel. Mm -hmm. Because that's pretty much the same thing. You can travel in time or in space. <laughs> yeah, like Doctor Who. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, oh, uh, I would probably not have said that we win. And you just go back <laughs> and you just avoid to say things. Well, yeah. <laughs> Remember to avoid to say things. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what the, this is it. What about your power, Simon? I already said that I want Batman superpower. Or uh, Bruce Wayne. Batman, Batman, Batman doesn't have any superpower. He's Money. rich. Money. Money. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he was talking about. Yeah, I want to be transported by an helicopter, driven by a, a, some other guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> because well, I'm you know this is you know what? very weird. You know what? I'm telling you, if you can teleport yourself, you can, for example, teleport yourself in the cavo of a bank, take all the money, and just <laughs> take them back to your home. So you're, you're, you, you're, you become you're, very rich in a, you know, in a very short period of time. <laughs> you're yeah, you're nice. smarter than me. That, that's why um, I'm taking that. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest you teleport directly to your bank, not your home. You you wouldn't get oh, any well, use yeah, that money otherwise. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. We could teleport from Cabo to Cabo <laughs> and see <laughs> what banks. Or you can actually, well, I mean, you can also you can also time travel to the past and uh, and do like um, back to the future. You can just steal. The sport almanac and and just you know do sports betting and winning a lot of money because you already know how the matches are going to. I'm getting the feeling that you drummers are all about money. I like it because we don't have because we don't have it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't choose drums. Drums are very expensive, so <laughs> you better find out a way to afford them. Basically. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Speaks, uh... Drum heads, cymbals, broken. I mean, I have to be completely honest. I cannot complain about that. So I'll, I'll shut up about that. But like most of drummers are struggling because, you know, as any other instrument, it's not, it's not cheap. You know, no, it's, it's, it's the most expensive one. I mean, anytime uh, you break a cymbal, you know, that's a big deal. Oh yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're struggling for money, uh, it, it's the, the most expensive one. It's the most expensive one. There, there are no no, no mid terms for this. Probably, uh, yeah. I mean, if 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 I wasn't endorsing Sonar drums, I would never be able to afford the drums that I'm playing. <laughs> And Simon knows. <laughs> yeah. So We... yeah. Singers are lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're also lucky because they magically disappear when it's time to load in and load out. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they also appear late on stage when it's time to sound check. So it's <laughs> it's good. Have you ever played covers? Which of them was the music most difficult and easiest for you? I think this is for you, Fede. Uh, well, I mean, I've played plenty of covers uh, with different, you know, lineups and bands. And oh, the most difficult one, probably, I would say, um, Dave's Gone Skiing by Toto's. It's an instrumental song. I think it's on Tambu, probably. Mm -hmm. That song. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually played that song uh, with this quartet uh, specifically made up to open up for the Aristocrats six years ago. We played wow. that song uh, and, and a few other instrumental songs. But I remember that one being particularly difficult but also fun because there's a seven eight section in the middle where i could uh do a little drum solo so that's probably the most difficult one i've done so far i'm not really into covers very much so uh for this reason it's it's not even possible for me to tell you what's the easiest one I don't remember, to be honest. If, if it was so easy, it's it's because I don't even remember about, about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I don't know if the, the, the question was for us as well, but uh, I don't play a lot of covers because I don't like to play covers because I find it uh, frustrating to play music written Uh, by someone else and not being able to play it exactly as it was recorded. Uh, this is something just mine. I think when I just play a cover, I want to uh, play it exactly as it was recorded. 
and it's almost impossible so i find it frustrating uh, so there are no easy cover for me and they are all the most difficult one even the, mean, the, the, the apparently simple songs they are yeah not simple <laughs> to be honest i'll be extremely honest i'm at the point in my career right now where i finally can't afford not to play covers anymore i've done plenty of covers when i was younger which definitely was a, a very useful moment because learning other people's songs and learning how to properly play a certain style or uh, a certain type of groove in, in order to better serve the music, especially when someone else is just, you know, singing on top of that. It's, it's a very useful process, but uh, I think I've earned my freedom from that <laughs> so i'll keep it right now that, that's great that's great uh okay guys uh, it's more than one hour and a half yeah <laughs> so, yeah should we bye -bye the... it's been fun it's been a good hang yeah it, it was it was absolutely do you want to have a final speech we always ask to everyone we interview so do you want oh to give my God. Final, speech? final speech like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not even like <laughs> sounds like a president or something. I don't know what you say. Like, I mean, guys, be yourself. <laughs> Unless you can be Bruce Wayne, then be Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Best final, final speech ever. That's great. <laughs> Well, man, I, I want to, to thank you with uh, the exact words that I use on the on the booklet of our latest album. I was we, moved by those words, by the way. Thank you. Those words... He's going to read them. Ah, the, oh, come on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take some napkins then. <laughs> <laughs> In my credits, I, I was thanking my my teachers and especially Federico Paolovic, who totally helped me to improve both my drumming and my way to think. Wow. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Thanks to you, man. Okay, being helpful. That's what that's what you know fuels my uh, will to to be better and better in what I do seeing students like yourself doing better and better and you know taking advantage of what's been my experience so far and yeah thank you that's all i have to say okay guys oh. okay thank you thank you fede thank you. for being with us it was thank a you pleasure. guys for inviting uh, me it's been a pleasure and i wish you all the best with the band and the project hopefully all this pandemic situation will end up soon and we all can get back and, and do what we love the most, which is playing shows. And I really wish that to you as well. And uh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So stay safe Thank and you. don't forget to check his website because of course, he is you. teaching drums also online. So if you're interested, he is a great drummer and a great teacher. So. And check out a guy, check him out. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, okay. thank you for being with us and stay safe. Bye, thank you guys. Thank Bye. you very much. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>